Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are next. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw. And now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me this week, we have Zombie Scarecrow. Uh. We have Psycho Amy. Hello, I'm not a psycho. Much. I'm just chirpy. We have... Chirpy the... to scare me. <laughs> the Dark Jedi himself... Stuart. Skeletor, nyah. No. Just, <laughs> just, just, just no. <laughs> and we also have the model guy, Eugene. Hello. So, EJ may or may not join us. I'm assuming he won't, because I haven't heard from him, and normally I do. And if he does join us, he'll probably break Skype, like bloody always. So, yeah, who knows. Anyway, this week we've only really got one thing on the slate. Deadpool! So, most of us have seen it. I know Amy hasn't, because Scarecrow was a bad boy and didn't take Amy like on Valentine's Day like he should have. Yeah. Uh, so. Hey. What? I'm going to blame you for something. You're not on here often enough anymore. Uh... It's only because I keep getting freaking night shifts the night before. Uh. <sighs> yeah. So Scarecrow's a little bit zombified. But to be perfectly honest, he's almost always zombified nowadays, so that doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, so... Fuck you. <laughs> Oi. Well, it's true. <laughs> and after all, just to keep it, the language down, it's meant to be PG-13. It lasts about a minute, but we try. Uh, no. What? <laughs> so, so yeah, so me and Stuart have seen it. I'm pretty sure Stuart's seen it. How many times have you seen it, Stuart? Uh, just the once. I will go back and see it more. Oh, that's boring. I've seen it twice. I had to. You got to watch it at least five times to get everything. Oh yeah, I've missed a lot. There is so much stuff happening in the background. <laughs> So like it's an in-joke on top of an in-joke inside of an in-joke about something that most people won't get. <laughs> but yeah. So anyway, spoiler-free review. As always, first 10 minutes is spoiler-free and then we go on to just... Destroyed it. Yeah, pretty much. So, spoiler-free review for me is the worst jokes in the movie are the ones that are in the trailer. That is how good this movie is. So, when they've got the worst parts in the trailer, the rest of it you know is going to be spectacular. So, yeah. That's my spoiler for your review. My spo- my sp- I have one word for my spoiler for your review. Francis! Oh, God. <laughs> That's a spoiler in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> Scarecrow? Uh, I don't even know how to do a review for this movie without making making it full of spoilers, but it's bloody good. It's not what you'd expect, but you'll enjoy the crap out of it. Oh, yeah. Hawk said that they were laughing just as it started with the... But we, pretty much the entire cinema I was in when I saw it was falling out of their chairs during the credits. During yeah. the start sequence credits. Exactly. Oh, there's just, just that sequence alone has so many jokes. So, it's sort of, they set the bar high and then they keep the, the pace up there. Mm. There's a couple of slow moments, but to be perfectly honest... It needed them. It needed them. You need those moments in a movie like this. To catch your breath? Yeah, pretty much. It's sort of a... It's, sort of a, they, it's almost like they played it to a test audience, worked out when they were starting to suffocate from laughter, and then said, okay, we need to add a slow moment here. Okay, good. They, they, they're, they're breathing. They're not passing out. Okay, cool. Well, see how long they last. Yep, we need to add another slow moment here so they don't die. <laughs> and that's pretty much how it went. 
So, but yeah, it was really, 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 really good. Really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. So yeah. I love the X-Men. You know, they were cool. <laughs> I love the reference to them as well. Oh yeah, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Uh, um, yeah, this is so much good stuff. Uh, so I think maybe that covers it for a spoiler-free review. Definitely worth watching, definitely not for kids, and I would give it 9.5 out of 10. I was actually really annoyed I was in cinemas, because there were so many families that brought their, like, 13-year-old kids into it, were like, no! Fuck off! Hmm. Yeah, really well, in Australia, it's MA15, and the rules for MA15 is... You can go with someone over 18, I know. Yeah, as long as you're with someone over 18. The parents weren't even... Real. Like the parents, just, you could see on the face, the parents were just there just to take the kids and not watch it. Hmm. Pretty much. They should have said no then. Anyway. Probably yeah. Nagged them for too long. Oh yeah. But there was. Don't forget, there was that big sort of pushback at the very beginning of parents saying, "No, we want our, we want this movie to be have like a PG thirteen version." It's like, no. Can you don't imagine this movie as a PG thirteen version? It no, work. it'd be about four minutes long. <laughs> I don't know. I think it'd be. Fu- I think it'd be funny because it'd be like he- how he is in like Ultimate Spider-Man. So he's, he says he can't kill anything, so he has he can't use the K word. So he has to say he's unaliving everything. <laughs> <laughs> and like he's and like he's only allowed one like one fuck in the movie, so he's like struggling not to say it all the time. I think it'd be like a creative funny way you could do it to pull yeah. it off. Yeah, it, 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 okay, it wouldn't be impossible, but at the same time, it wouldn't be Deadpool. So. With people saying, and you know, we need to tone a movie down, or we need to change the movie, is the, the people that are saying that aren't familiar with the source material. Exactly. Exactly. And the Deadpool source material is an adult comic. It's not a comic that you give to a fucking ten-year-old. No. So, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, out of ten, go. Uh, yeah, nine and a half. Nine and a half. Scarecrow. Nine. Nine. Solid nine. Solid nine. Yep. Yeah, I'll go with that. It's probably that's a, the highest and most sort of collected rating we've given a movie. It so. was funny, even if the. Even if some of the parts of it were crap, yeah. it was just overall funny. Exactly. It's it's okay, put it this way, it has got the own it is the only Fox made Marvel movie in my top ten Marvel movies. The only one made by Fox. Hey Fox I think that's because Fox knew if they if they screwed it up there'd be way too much backlash. Oh yeah. Send uh, through Skype the image you got yesterday. What? It, this is a video podcast, so we yeah. don't. D- d- what? So it's, it's an audio podcast, not a video yeah. podcast. We don't, I don't the know. The image about. of the rating uh, in the first weekend. Oh, right, yes, that one. One minute. Um, okay. Uh, let's put it this way Deadpool kicked everyone else's ass. Oh, the, by the amount of money that it was making? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I will go into that detail. We'll, we'll get into that in the news, so... Okay, I think that's about it enough for our spoiler-free review. And um, Have you seen it, Eugene? No, I haven't, but go ahead anyway. Alright. Okay, time to move on to the spoiler field um, section of this podcast. If you don't want this and you just want the news, I suggest you skip forward or just turn it off. Because it's the news. It's all on t- facebook.com slash save sci-fi. Um, go give us a like there, give us a like on facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast, and we'll catch you in the next one. If you want model, if you want the model report, hang around, because it'll be, it'll come up later on. Um, but yeah, this is the spoiler filled section. So, you have been warned. Branches. Spoilers! Exactly. Spoilers, spoilers everywhere. Francis. Oh, God. <laughs> so, anyway, the movie opens up with the effectively the scene from the trailer where he's just beating the crap out of everybody on the highway. But it does it in almost a bullet-timey sort of 
free flowy slow slow mo sort of way of doing it it was it was done really really well and it also had the standard sort of opening sort of movie credity sort of feel until you actually read the credits themselves <laughs> it's like produced by Aspart, and it's like wait back up what <laughs> starring this hot guy yeah and and, and some cg dude <laughs> I actually got to admit, the CG for costumes was really well done. Oh yeah, it was, definitely, considering their budget. Um, and then you've got... Oh, and, and and in the background of the shot, as it's pinning around, you actually see one of the guy's wallets open, and you see a trading card coming out of it, and it's Green Lantern. Yeah, yeah. It's and it's like glowing green. glowing green. It's like a trading card. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, it, they took the piss out of Green Lantern. A oh, lot. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> Which is sort of justifiably so. Oh, yeah. Because he's been he's been booked to do Deadpool for almost 12 years. So, it, it's been... Yeah. It, so, he's sort of been... It's almost like he's been... He's wanted to do Deadpool, and on the way there, he has done other things. <laughs> so, but yeah. Oh... And it sort of cuts to him. It sort of starts off with him doing the the big sort of freeway battle and cuts away from that a couple of times to do flashbacks to explain sort of his origin story um, here and there. And But it's done really well. Like, I can't even begin to sort of describe how awesome it is. Like, at one point you see him playing with the toy Deadpool from the X-Men Deadpool movies. <laughs> and he's it's just like, wow... I can't. I gotta admit, I kind of want one of those Ultra, um, Voltron rings. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I was like, I just don't want to know where he pulled the lolly ring he he used to propose to that woman to his oh, girlfriend please. with. You all know it was a butt plug. <laughs> I don't want to know. Uh. Do now. Uh. Nope. 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 La la la. Not listening. La 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 la. <laughs> oh man. Pretty much. Even Joe is like, where do you pull it from? I just said, I'm like butt plug. <laughs> Uh, the, well, I like it how at one point you said during the because there was that that long sort of series of the fuck it the fucking scenes, which is the, the, the fu- sex montage. Yeah, sex montage. And at one point you see him on all fours, oh, and he's like, "I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this." It's like it's like it's like it's not going to hurt, is it? And you see her lean down from behind in full dom- sort of dominatrix sort of looking gear. Which is like, it'll be fine. And then it's sort of, you just see him go, yeah! <laughs> it's like, wow. Well. So, yeah. It, it, was, it was good. I, oh, man. This, just the amount of in-jokes. Like, after they, after they grab him on the, because he beats the crap out of everyone on the bridge and um, captures the dude that he wants to kill and um, stabs him through the chest and through the cement barrier and sort of pinning him in place so he can't go anywhere. <laughs> and he just, he just, he's talking to Colossus because at this point Colossus and the, the girl whose name I can't remember turns up. Neg- Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Yeah, her. And he's like, the coolest name ever. Anyway. <laughs> he's like, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, <Sorry>. he, <coughs> and Stuart's dying. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, next time, huh? What the shit? That's like the coolest name ever. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then, um, but yeah. Anyway, so th- this guy's over on the side of the road, pinned up against the guardrail, and they're trying to convince him to go back to the mansion with him. And so he's just walking around in circles, talking to them. Walks over to him, punches them in the head, walks away. Sort of walks a bit further off, picks up a hubcap, flicks it at him, smacks it off the side of his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just oh man, it was done so well. I think my favorite part is the taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> the taxi driver. <laughs> that was slightly cracked. The, se- the first time was funny. The second time was hilarious. Oh, but the, oh, the, that taxi driver. So it's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't wear a wallet. It messes with the, the awesome lines of this suit. He's like, oh, okay. It's like really disappointed. He gives him a high five, and that's where he sort of he hops out in the middle of a bridge. 
No taxi driver I know would stop in the middle of a bridge to let a guy out. Let alone that sketchy ass bridge. So it lets him out and Deadpool just sort of casually sits up on the railing and starts drawing his picture and it sort of, the movie roughly kicks off there. Um, he jumps off, lands in the back of the, of the douchebag's vehicle and just beats the crap out of everybody like you see in the trailer. Um, Have you seen this man? Yeah. Beats the crap out of everybody. What is that buzz? I don't know. No, maybe it's coming through from my. Maybe it's coming through from my end. Anyway, I just got a really random buzz in my headphones. Anyway, um. So he then they do the whole battle on the bridge, and X Men turns up, and they have a bit of a sort of a shouting match, and eventually Colossus just sort of grabs Deadpool. It's like, no, nope, you're coming off to see the professor. Whacks some handcuffs on him, starts dragging <laughs> away. Uh, which one, Patrick Stewart or, or McAvoy? Yeah. So that whole timeline thing's screwy. <laughs> it's like, well... So they start dragging while so he cuts off his own hand. And you see <laughs> it slowly... Star Wars th- reference, anyone? Yeah. Well, uh, they, they say 127 hours, but it's purely the Star Wars... It's Marvel and doing the Star Wars references. Oh, yeah. So he... He jumps off the bridge and escapes, leaving the two X-Men just sort of like, eh, whatever. Um, and they leave. He then sort of goes back to his house that he's living in with... Was that Ahura? The blind lady? I don't think it was. Let me bring up the IMDb. Yeah, bring up the IMDb. I'm not sure who it was. But the, 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 the lady that he was staying with looked really familiar. And I can't put my finger on why. It probably wasn't Ahura. She just looks really familiar. Anyway. Um... He's slowly regrowing the hand back, and it's about the size of maybe a... Oh, that was wrong. A toddler. Oh, boy. It's, it's, it's tiny. He puts it up against the side of her face, and... Because she's blind, she's... And he's like, oh, how does it feel? And, um... She's just sort of freaked out by it, and he's like, leave the room! And she's like, why? It's like, because it's gonna feel huge in this. It's like, oh, God. Oh, just, just no. No, just no. <laughs> Please, no. Yeah. And then it's sort of... The story sort of keeps going and... Um... He's trying to hunt down... And then... He's convinced by his... By the friend to go see... The girlfriend from earlier on in the movie. Um... And he just doesn't have the balls to talk to her. Because of how messed up he looks compared to what he used to look. Um... Before his mutation was activated. Um, so, she gets lured out the back and gets kidnapped by the dude that he caught on the bridge and stabbed and taken off to, uh, what looks like a, the, the comic book version of the Helicarriers. Yeah. Which sort of surprised me. Um. In yeah, theory, that's spare Helicarrier. So. Well, he ain't spare anymore. Yeah. That's, that's... Someone's got to explain to Fury how they break the carrier. Yeah. Well, it's. It's actually closer to how the helicarriers look in the comics as opposed to how they look in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In the comics, they they look more like um, the Reliant in Doctor Who, where they've got the giant jet turbines, sort of jet engine looking things poking down, and that's how it's stayed in the air. So, yeah. Have you found it, found it yet, Stuart? Yeah, yeah, I have. Uh, uh, it's not, um, uh, it's, uh, Leslie, um, I have no, I'm gonna get the name, it's either Ogums or, or, um, yeah, I'm just gonna go with that. Yeah. yeah what? She, she plays Blind Owl, so. So, uh, what else is she in? Uh, she's been around for a while, actually. Yeah, she looks so uh, familiar. She was in, um, The Girl from Uncle, she was in, uh, she was in Root, she's been in, um, Love, like, she's been, uh, um, doing... TV stuff for a lot. She's mainly a TV um, person, yeah. 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 She looks really familiar. I'll have to look that up later and see if I can work out where the hell I know her from. So, yeah. so anyway, I was wrong. It wasn't a horror. I thought it was. My bad. Anyway, moving right along. Um, so, he goes to the X Men mansion after working out where this guy is and knocks on the door and the, the girl answers. And he's like, wow, 
um, such a big mansion and whatnot, and it's and yet I only ever see you two in here. It's like the studio couldn't afford anybody else. Couldn't afford any more X Men. Yeah, couldn't afford any more X Men. It's like wow. <laughs> That was funny. Oh. And then they they fly off in the... They go off in the taxi with his mate, the taxi driver. <laughs> and then we find out that his cousin's in the boot. Yeah, we find out he's kidnapped the cousin because... the Anyway, he didn't really explain it earlier. But he's in love with a girl who's in love with his cousin. So he's kidnapped the cousin because that's what Deadpool told him to do. Um, and Deadpool's, like, in the car trying to look good to the, the expert. He's like, no, 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 no. I didn't mean, I didn't mean you kidnap a killer. Kill him. Um, sort of, sort of, whatever you do, make sure you let him go to the bottom of a reservoir. And it's just like, <laughs> wow. It's like, you're not fooling anyone. <laughs> no, no, you're not. But it was worth it, though. Oh, yeah, it was so good. And I'm admittedly I'm intentionally skimming over a lot of this stuff because so much stuff happens. You've got to watch the movie to see it all. You've got to watch the movie to get it all. I'm not going to sort of ruin all the jokes, but I will sort of flesh out the, the overall plot. Um, so yeah, and then they get to the helicopter, yeah. and, and he leaves all the weapons in the taxi. <laughs> he leaves all the weapons in the taxi, so because he, he, he went to the effort of getting every gun in his little flat thing together to take with him to wage war on this guy and um so he calls the taxi driver who fumbles the phone down underneath the seat um looks up to see a truck speeding across in front of him and plows into that and then a, and then all you hear is you smash and he's like oh hey such and such how are you in the back and you just see the guy in the back going oh, 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 oh. and it's like and it cuts out and the cars were rented and we just crushed his boot it's like, it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to jail. <laughs> it's like, oh no. It's like, yeah, I'm going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> and Deadpool's like, well, not getting my guns back. Oh, well, looks like I get to do all of this with my swords. Yay. Yeah, go on commando. So, literally, he actually tries to have a little surrender moment, uses the white undies as a... <laughs> as a <the> flag. flag. <laughs> it's like, ah, ha, ha. Where'd he pull them from? He was wearing them. He was wearing them. <laughs> uh, so, so anyway, they go. So they go in, and then the the chick goes to jump off the helicopter. It's like, look, superhero landing, superhero landing. She lands, and it's like, oh, it looks really cool, but it is really bad for your knees. And um, which is true. Hey, Sky's joined us. Oh, he's actually alive this morning. Yeah, I thought he'd be asleep. Yeah. Um, then she face. then you see this, the scene from the trailer where she faces off against Colossus and Colossus is like, look, I don't want to hurt you, but we've got to get to this guy, so, and you know, whack. <laughs> whack. He gets launched. And then he's like, that's why I brought her. And she's just texting away, just like in the trailer. And eventually she tosses the phone and amps up or whatever the hell she does and sort of charges up and explodes like yeah. a freaking rocket. Yeah, straight into... Find, at that point, she's been wearing, like, leather jackets and goth-looking stuff the whole time. Then we find out she's been wearing the traditional black and yellow X-Men uniform underneath. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, it survives the explosions, the rest of the clothes don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. So she's glad she's wearing underneath? Pretty, it's probably why she wears it underneath. Um, launches the chick and they get into a bit of a bit of fifty cuffs for a second. All the guys around there start shooting at them. Deadpool gets the, the girl to safety and Colossus is just like bullets. What are bullets? Sort of casually walking forwards. Starts going fifty cuffs with the the strong chick. Um, Deadpool tries to surrender with his underpants. Um, and then that really doesn't work very well for him. So he just starts slaughtering the lot of them. Until the last guy, which is one of his mates from somewhere else. <laughs> From a previous war, yeah, for knocks what? him out. He's the oh. only one who survives. This yeah. <laughs> he, he's like, it's like, oh my god, Dave. For what was his name? From what the guy's name was. Hey, yeah, that, I that, that as well. Yeah, but anyway, he's like, he's like, oh my god, it's you. How'd you been up to? How's things? 
How's the missus? <laughs> and, the, and the kids. Uh, just catching up. And uh, then just, just knocks him out. Cuts back to Colossus fighting Super Strong. Colossus puts Super Strong down, but one of the tits falls out. You don't see it, but you see Colossus sort of wince away and cover his face and sort of a... It's like, I'm so sorry, I'm just not what I mean to do. And um, so she sort of realises that, sort of covers up, and then just, just whacks him in the nuts. Really, really hard. I, I cringe. I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah. When when a guy made a metal cringes after something like that, you know it hurts. So yeah, he. So they keep fighting for a bit. Um, she clonked him in the balls hard. Oh yeah. Maybe it went through too hard. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, entirely feasible. Yeah. So I wonder if she dented it inwards. Anyway, weird sustenance aside, <laughs> um, the explosion when we see Deadpool getting launched is actually the the girl launches him up there. Um, he gets up there, starts beating the crap out of the guys up there, and fighting with the dude up there. And then I can't. What what caused the the explosion on the helicarrier and caused it to roll over again? Can't remember. She did. She did. The. The girl. The explosive girl. Yeah. When she launched Deadpool up there, she co- the impact was so big and did structural damage to the lower part of it, it kind of cracked. Ah, yeah, that's right. And it lists over and all the stuff starts falling off. The girlfriend is in the same tube that he was in when he got mutated and... Um... It mutates her? No. No, no, no. no. She hasn't been given the mutation serum, so... Yeah. Um, it's so... just a tactic to piss him off. Yeah, it... Because it could suffocate you, and that's effectively what he's trying to do, is suffocate her. Um, Which he stops by, thr- by sticking one of his swords through it in the middle of the fight, reducing his available weapons against a guy who feels no pain. Yeah, but Deadpool is effectively immortal, so the only way to kill Deadpool is same as Wolverine, chop his head off. Even then, he'd probably regen the rest of his body. Yeah, eventually. He's got a, he's got a healing factor that makes Wolverines look like a pansies, but yeah. it takes longer to kick in. Exactly. Um, you, cut his, you cut his head off, it'll probably take him about three weeks to regenerate himself. Yeah, but the problem with that is you need all of the rest of everything else in your body to be able to regen. And if he's missing the rest of everything else in his body, it's not really going to happen. Well, they did say they think the only thing that's going to stop him, to kill him, is going to be a nuke. That would... Vaporise everything. That would do it. Anyway, um... So, saves the girl, sort of. Sort of. Sort of. Um, the... He's sort of down in the rubble, and the bad guy somehow survives the fall down, and Deadpool beats the crap out of him, pins him to the ground, and then Colossus starts the whole, there are four or five moments in, a, in your life where you have to decide, God, that is not even close to Russian. Anyway, not the point. No, it's not. <laughs> that is that was that was bad. That was that was really bad. Anyway, any it's... Russians watch it, listen to this? I, sorry. We we apologize. I'm Australian. We offending people is what we do. It really is. I'm sorry. Um. Anyway, he sort of starts the whole spiel about this. The difference between a superhero and a supervillain is it's only a couple of moments in your life where you've got to choose the greater good. Blah blah blah. And about halfway through, Deadpool just kills the, just flat out kills the guy. It's like just point blank shoots him. Yeah. Colossus just, just pukes. Yeah, Colossus just goes blah, blah, all over the ground. And he's like, what? You were, you were monologuing. It was taking too long. <laughs> it really was. It's just like, yeah, nope. You're done. And then, <sighs> um, so yeah. Then they sort of, it sort of flashes. No, then. The chick gets let out of the tube thing and gets up and he reveals what he looks like now and the camera starts pulling out. Deadpool's like, yeah, keep pulling out. It's the only thing that's going to be pulling out tonight. <laughs> it's like, wow. Oh, don't, don't forget the super penis. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to know. Yeah. And then um, it starts with the end credits and the end credits are just as funny. It's... Yeah, they were. <laughs> oh. Um, this... the... Oh, you forgot to mention the Stan Lee insert. Oh yeah, the Stan Lee insert um, was pretty good. 
because e in every Marvel movie, Stan Lee likes to make a cameo. Oh yeah. They weren't sure where to put him this time. So they put him in the only spot they could. The strip club. The strip club. He was the DJ in a strip club. <laughs> he would have enjoyed that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's probably the best cameo he's, he's ever had. Oh yeah. He's been random extras at uh, weddings or... Bars. Donuts in bar or serving donuts to Tony Stark and Fury and stuff like that, but no. Yeah. This time, strip joint. Oh yeah. Um, so anyway, from the, in the end credits are pretty funny. It sort of starts listing all the different people and all that stuff, and Deadpool's sort of reacting to them. When um, okay, is everyone quiet compared to me? What the hell? My levels say that I'm the quieter one. I don't know. What the hell? <laughs> They're Max, so I'll have to dial me down. There's a lot of background noise coming from your end, Dave. Yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on. Anyway. I do, I do hear background noise. Yeah, there's a lot of static coming from somewhere. It doesn't appear to be coming from my end. Uh, static from something. Yeah, anyway. So I'll just blame Skype. Just, just Skype. Oh, it's the, the buzz is back. Um, anyway. When um, the chick that played the girlfriend, Marina's name comes up on the, the credits, he gets a hard on. And you see him sort of point at it with a very, very obvious hard on. And then the next name comes up, who. What was the next name? It was Chris somebody, I think. I'm not sure. But I can't remember, I can't remember what the next name was, but it doubled. And you, and you see him effectively dry humping the air. It's like, what the hell? Then all the normal credits rolled. Francis's actor. Ah. Um. Then the... The rest of the credits rolled. And then the end credit scene. And it's just him going, Why are you still here? There's nothing to show you. Go home. Make sure you take your rubbish with you because you want to clean up after... The, you you want to help these guys clean up. So get, take your shit with you and go home. And then it fades out to blank, comes up with a tiny little bit of text, jumps back into another shot. It's like, oh, by the way, we've worked out who we're going to do for number two. It's this guy. And it's like, um, Cable. Cable. It's Cable. We're going to have we're gonna have Cable as a bad guy. We haven't worked out who we're going to cast no, they as just Cable. Said it's going to have Cable in it, not as a bad guy. Yeah. Um gonna have cable and we're gonna do this we're gonna have this person or this person or this person it was really really funny <laughs> yeah because he even mentions like give me anyone with long with like short hair and giant and giant boobs could be Mel Gibson could be Kira Knightley <laughs> I was like yeah oh. yeah yeah she has a lot of range no <laughs> yeah. oh. now back to some of the the jokes that I skipped over so I skipped over a lot of jokes it's almost constant jokes in jokes. I think my favourite one was whatever happened to that Ryan Reynolds guy? He was doing really well. He, he was looking really, really good and now look at him. And I was like, well... <laughs> Triggered much? Yeah. <laughs> now, my favourite one has to be the the back and forth um, with with um, Ryan and TJ. Like, when, when he takes the hood off. <laughs> Close second for me is when they're taking him in to get his superpowers. And he's like, look, do I get a super suit? I want a super suit. It just can't be green or animated. It's like, wow. Like we didn't see it coming. Yeah. Poor Green Lantern. <laughs> it's pretty bad when you're taking, taking the piss out of your own character, though. Yeah. Yeah. At least you can get away with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really, really good. I really enjoyed that movie. Like I said, I'll probably go watch it again. Um, I might even watch it again tomorrow. Just for something to do. <laughs> I probably am watching it again tomorrow to kill some time. There you go, Amy. You just got to go to wherever the hell he's going to be. I'll be at college. Oh, that's boring. He's getting educated. 
<laughs> so, anyway, um, let's move on and do the model report really quick. Actually, no, yeah, model report, model report. Okay, today's uh, model report. We're gonna go old school and take a look at War of the Worlds by Pegasus Hobbies. Pegasus Hobbies, for the past couple of years, has been issuing War of the Worlds model kits uh, based on two of the War of the Worlds series. They've done the old Manta ship from the 1953 film, and that's available in two scales. You can get it in 148 scale, which is a standard scale, or you could get it in one 144th scale, which includes two Sherman tanks in the same scale. Oh, nice. Uh-huh. Now, the 148th scale is also available in an assembled, pre-painted version, and I do believe that that comes in an actual uh, copper chrome version. Nice. Then, they've also done the uh, 1953 1-8 scale War of the Worlds Martian figure, which you can get. And from the Tom Cruise version, they've done a 1-144 scale a War of the Worlds tripod, and they also did a 1-8 scale alien. Nice. The uh, both of the both of the alien creatures are also available in pre-painted versions. Now the different model kits, uh, the the war machines with the with the uh, Sherman tanks has a retail of about twenty two dollars. Both alien creatures have retails of about thirty dollars. The 1953 Manta ship is about $35, and the tripod is about $66. A uh, couple things about the, the Pegasus Hobbies models. Um, they are good for lighting up, so if you want to light the models, they are designed that you can do that. The bad part about Pegasus Hobbies is they do not use styrene. They use a different type of plastic. So before you go painting these things, you want to test your paints on them. Because otherwise, you'll end up with little things like the paint not drying properly. And it could remain tacky. Yeah, that'd suck. So test it on a side piece, not a proper piece. Yeah. Test, it up, test it on the screws or on the trees. But th these are nice kits, and they can be fully lighted. I've seen people that have lit up the different ones and they look fantastic. Nice. But you but you do want to touch things ahead of time. Um, but this report's brought to you by Perry County Hobbies. Sweet. Uh, Stuart, do you want to do the news? Yep. And we'll start with Deadpool, because why the hell not? Oh yeah. <laughs> and we'll start with how much Deadpool made in its opening weekend. Don't forget to compare uh, it to the others. Ten, ten dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollars. Uh, do we want to do like worldwide, or we're just going to go domestic, or both? All right. Um. Right. So, worldwide, it's currently actually let's bring up the current because it's probably changed. So I'll bring up the box office. Let's see where Deadpool's at. <coughs> <coughs> so, <ooh. coughs> Scarecrow, you dead yet? No. <laughs> Close, but no. So domestic growth, so this is in America alone for Deadpool, is 100, 150 million. I think it's about um, 135 million, so that's like 285 million opening weekend, which is gigantic for an R rated movie. Oh yeah. The only, the only R-rated movie that is above it in the opening weekend was 300. Understandable. Which oh, which oh, so um so yeah, it should over actually um overtake 300 by um next week actually in like all money o um earned. Yeah. 
So yeah, <laughs> no surprise with that. Oh yeah. Uh, let's move on to Spawn. We've got some Spawn news. Ooh. I haven't heard anything about Spawn in... A long time, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely cannot remember the last time I heard anything about Spawn, to be honest. So yeah, uh, Todd McFarlane is going full steam ahead on, on, on um, a Spawn movie, but according to him, it won't be a a, um, a superhero movie. It's going to be um, rated R, but they're going more into horror, suspense, supernatural genre. That's a weird direction to take it. I know. The old Spawn cartoon that was on HBO was fantastic. Yeah. So, I'm, I mean, it was many times better than the old film. So, if he goes back to that, or or even more towards the comics, that would be great. Hopefully yeah. it doesn't, like, I would love to, because I've said for a long time I want to see a, 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 a modern Spawn, so, I'm hoping this as for personal things, I really hope this doesn't turn into Fantastic Four. Oh god, no. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, this is interesting, and this is only found today. Um, Knights of the Old Republic is getting a, a fan remaster using Unreal Engine 4. Really? Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, uh, the unofficial uh, project of Knights of the Old Republic, Aperion, is going to get, um, it's going to keep all the, um, all the, like, the entire combat system, but up-to-date graphics engines and stuff, and a couple of new worlds and missions. Oh, nice. So this is, a, supposedly this is legal as well. Yeah, well, we'll see what Disney says about that. Yeah. Well, that's a puzzle bit. Disney's got a severe case of well, the supposed. According supposeds. to the, according to the, um, the Aperion website, um, they believe it to be completely legal. It'll be a wait and see. Yeah, what they believe and what reality is doesn't necessarily be the same, Blaine. Yeah. So we've, um, we had a few trailers drop this week. Yes, we did. Uh, we had a dead Evil, a part one, I should say. Of a Daredevil trailer. Yep. The part, the part two comes out next week on the 25th. We had the Batman vs. Superman trailer, the one that should have been aired at the Super Bowl, to be perfectly blunt. That, that trailer is... That, fir that first... That even, like, the fight scene is enough to sell anyone on the movie. Yeah. They, they, it's pretty much... This is the best way to describe it, that fight scene. It is the Arkham series fight style, the, as in the video games the feel of the animated series and the feel of the animated series combined. Yeah. And it's, it's so much the Arkham City fight style that someone's actually done the fight scene in Arkham City. Yeah. Which is sort of funny. So it looks really, really good. Um, that said, I'm still expecting it to be not that good. But that's just me and my biases and I'll stand by those biases. Yep. At least I'm being and honest about it. <laughs> <laughs> and Star Wars related. A cute little teaser trailer saying the production has started on, ep on episode 8. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Well, that was a real exciting uh, announcement from them. Well, last I looked, they released it less than a day ago, and it's at almost 500,000 views on YouTube, so... I'm all waiting for um, Rogue One, that's what I want to say. I want Rogue, I want Rogue One details. Oh yeah. It's, it's, I expect we'll get something at um at Star Wars Celebration in London. Oh yeah, more than likely. So. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, Predator's getting a movie. Predator? Yeah, Predator. Like a reboot or a. It's already been three Predator films. <laughs> yeah, well, this is another one. It's just called The Predator. Is it about a Predator drone? Not not sure. There's no real details. It's just there's a tra uh, there's just a teaser poster. And it says the predator. You'll never see him coming. He's fighting Boba Fett, isn't he? <laughs> well, he has the cannon. So <laughs> but yeah, uh, the streaming for this is being handled by um Shane Black, the um director for um Iron Man three and co-writing with uh Fred Decker. Nice. Could be worse. They could be writing with Tony Stark. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see if we've got any. I haven't checked Flash and Arrow news because 
yeah. kind of woke up very late. Oh yeah, this is funny. <laughs> um, so Stephen Mill had a panel da- uh, um, at Dallas Comic Con over the weekend, and uh, WWE superstar Stardust uh, crashed it. Oh god. <laughs> there, there's there's a uh, hint that there's going to be a WrestleMania match between them. Nice. But they've been doing a lot of um, charity work together for um for uh, um there was a child that um had cancer and like they did a, both of them did a lot of charity work with them so it was a play nice. on that. Speaking but of the, uh, kids with cancer, really, really, really quickly, did you hear what happened in New South Wales the other day? I was getting to Iron Boy. You were? Excellent. Keep going with your other thing, we'll get to Iron Boy in a minute. Yeah, so um, at, at the end of it, um, they shook hands and then uh, Stardust threw water on him. <laughs> Twice. Uh. He was... <laughs> sat- <laughs> Easy to say he was not amused. <laughs> Neither were the fans that have to have their photo with him later. <laughs> He'll dry. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh. uh, for those who haven't watched, who didn't watch the Arrow episode last weekend, someone lost a hand. <laughs> Star Wars references everywhere, apparently. Just because somebody loses a hand, that doesn't mean it has to be a Star Wars reference. Come on, Doctor Who lost a hand as well. Yeah. Exactly. See, it could be a Doctor Who reference. Ha ha. Well, considering it was Varman, it wouldn't actually surprise me. <laughs> Are we really getting into the hand jokes? Uh. He's just short-handed now. Oh god. Come on, come on. Can't you chuck me a hand or two? <laughs> uh, so I heard it. Speaking of Arrow, our good friends over at Garrison Seven. I was talking <sighs> to them the other day. Um. And. He has a really interesting hypothesis about the who's in the grave. Oh? Yeah. Felicity. What? No. No, it's not Felicity it because... It can't be. No, no, no. Because... Hear, me, hear me out. I said exactly the same thing. Unless it's Earth 2 Felicity? No. Felicity would never, ever say, kill him. She's not that sort of person. So he said the reason he thinks it's Felicity is because that isn't Felicity. That is him just being psychologically broken and hallucinating her. Now I still oh, so I, like he, like he does with Shadow. Yeah, I still stand. I still stand by that it's the sun because we just Malcolm oh, just told yeah, him about setting, the sun. Yeah, it's just it's setting up. So, I still think it's the mother. Um, I still I think the mother it's was already dead. Mom. No, Felicity's mom. Um, oh, Felicity's mom. No, Supposedly, think... one of the actors in Arrow has removed everything to, to deal with Arrow on her Facebook page. Oh? One of the female actors. Wait, what? Which one? Um, I, haven't, I haven't heard anything about that. That's the first I've heard. I've, I've forgotten the name of which one it was. Who does she play? I don't know. Uh, uh, Amy, the, you're not allowed in the news anymore, girl. <laughs> I'm never allowed in the news. Uh, so, but yeah. So he, that's his sort of hypothesis, is that that felicity in the car is actually a hallucination. Well, we'll find out when it happens. Now everyone's gone quiet. <laughs> I'm, just trying to look up, I'm just trying to look up the story. Yeah. See if I can find anything. About that, because that's wait, that's really big news to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. We'll go uh, move over to Flash and uh, the the second part of um the Earth Two um two parter is happening this week called um called Escape from Earth Two. Nice. And I think they're gonna do the reveal for Zoom in it. And our friends over at Garrison Seven have an interesting hypothesis about Zoom as well. Oh, this something one we didn't consider. Who? So, just taking votes. Who's who thinks Zoom is the dad, Barry's dad? That's that's my guess, just for the record. I, th- it's my guess as well. Or it's um, there's a really interesting theory of Wally West being Zoom. Uh, Earth three Barry is oh, Sky's God. response. Um, oh, God. No, no, it's not Earth. No, we're on Earth 2. 
an Earth Two Barry isn't a speedster at all. Yeah, he's but a, he's he a says he's, he's come. Nerd. He's saying he's come through from Earth Three to Earth Two. Oh God, I don't don't want an infinite crisis. Yeah. Well, anyway, what do you expect with um, what do you expect with Barry going through time? Exactly. Uh, well, so the he reckons it's Wally West. And the it reason makes, he says it, it's Wally West is because Wally's always looking for speed. Speed, yeah. So, and good guys in our universe are bad guys in that universe for the most part. Um, so that's sort of the angle that it's coming from. is because it's a relative flip. Not in every case, but in a lot of cases it's a relative flip. That's his argument. So, I was like, that's actually an interesting point. I still think it's the dad. <laughs> well, we're going to find out very soon because they released um, a, 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 a trailer for like the rest of season two and it shows Zoom taking off the mask and to Barry. So Very so, interesting. So either, Bar- either we'll get to see or Barry will know who it is. Yeah, so... But I really hope... Like, I, I, I reckon it's Grodd. Earth I 3 Grodd. Has to be a three grod. It's the only. It's the only explanation. A three grod. <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> Grood, whatever the hell his name is. No, it's grod. It's, it's grod. grod. It's gorilla. It's grod. Yeah. So there you go. There you go, Sky. That's my hypothesis for Earth three characters that it could be. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I broke to it. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Supernova and some guest announcements they had. Oh yeah, just just a dozen or so. Yeah, uh, a, a a few uh, few uh, repeats with um, Manu's coming back again. Manu, I swear to God, Manu just loves Supernova. No, no, he does every convention. He's like, you look up a list of conventions, like, and the list of things that he's doing. Every weekend of the year, he's at a convention somewhere. I find it funny because he's also just, shouldn't he be an Arrow at the moment? Or is he being killed off? No, he was Deathstroke is not coming back. Yeah. Okay. Because there's, there's rumors supposedly they're going to do either a Suicide Squad movie or or um or they're going to bring um, Deathstroke into the movie universe so they won't use him on TV anymore. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, it's it was yeah. Seriously, yeah, the, look um, up his look up his schedule and it's just <laughs> it's just convention, convention, convention. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you must be making a small fortune from the conventions. Anyway, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of awesome guests. Um, Eck Darville, uh, Sean Mayer. Okay. Sean Mayer's actually Sean Mayer's cool. He was in Firefly, so and he's also the voice of Nightwing in the in the in the um, anime movies of Batman. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to um, see if he's signed my Firefly stuff. There it is. Well, he's uh, the only time he's been in Brisbane was 2013. So. He He's done Sydney have. 2011, Perth 2011, Adelaide, and Brisbane 2013. So it's been a few years since he's been. Yeah, he might have. I'm not sure. I said I'll have to check. I'll look up a picture of his signature and compare it to all the signatures I have on there. It's not necessarily accurate, but it's, it's a good gauge to go by. So, now, I've actually got a little bit of a secret from the Garrison 7 guys. Garrison 7 is going to have something really, 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 really cool for Supernova. You, you seriously, you're going to want to be there if only for the Garrison 7 panel. I'm not allowed to tell you what, I'm not allowed to tell you when, I'm not allowed to tell you any of those details. All I know is that Garrison 7 at Supernova is going to have something spectacular. You need to be there. So. Very booked. So, Jack Gleason, uh, Joffrey from Game of Thrones. God, he gets them hate. <laughs> I feel sorry for him. I really yeah. do. Like, he's, he's, he's sort a, of got used to it and has sort of grown to sort of accept he's it. He's an but, incredible yeah. actor. Oh, yeah. Incredible actor. Definitely. There's not too many actors that literally get as much hate as he do for a character. Yeah. There's, there's those people out there that can't seem to tell the difference between a character and a... So... So, yeah, so... But the ones I'm definitely looking forward to... Uh, 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 Michelle, Eve, Gareth, and Nyoko? Question mark? Yeah, yeah. And John. All the Doctor Who guys. They're going to be really, really good. Um, so, you hear the hear, um, James David Frank's going to Sydney and Perth? 
they've got some really good names coming for Sydney and Perth. Three names that have been released are all three names that I'd love to come here. One of which I've already met. So. I've met two of them. So you've got Gal Gadot. Gadot? Um, she's Wonder Woman. Effectively Wonder Woman. James Masters from Buffy. And Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger. They're all going to Sydney. So it's going to be really, really cool. But yeah. Um, so, Stuart, you got any more news? Yeah, um, Oz Comic Con announced a, f- a couple of cool guests as well. Oh, nice. Uh, Joe Flanagan. Ah, <laughs> The hair. <laughs> this is, my, my, this uh, is for Perth and Adelaide as well. Our, our writer, uh, one of my friends is a writer, Alex. I've mentioned her on the podcast a couple of times before. She's obsessed with Joe Flanagan. She calls him the hair. <laughs> When she met him, oh, when was it? When he was in Brisbane last time, she was up here and he was up there. She just stood in front of him and sort of reached towards the top of his head and just goes, The hair! Like, no, pull her hands down. It's like, no. <laughs> He's sort of giving her this look of, what the hell? <laughs> and the other cool, uh, the other cool one is uh, Rick, uh, Rick Hosnett. He, is, uh, he was um, Eddie in Flash. Nice. So yeah, he's, gonna, he's doing the uh, Perth and Adelaide uh, tour. Nice. I wish I had more money to do more tours. So do I. Yeah. Everyone does, but you need to make the money to spend it. Yeah, I know. The problem is the Adelaide tour is the same weekend as um, Gold Nova, so... Yeah. It's like, a couple of years ago, <coughs> I think it was 2014, they were about three weeks apart, so you could do both. But ever since then, they've been on the same goddamn weekend. And it's like, what the hell, guys? It's like, Supernova's already announced when they're doing it. The least you could do is sort of look at that and go, okay... Let's instead of giving the fans a choice of um, going to one or the other, let's move ours a couple of weeks beforehand or a month beforehand so that they can do both. And if you're in front of Supernova, they're more likely to spend all their money at yours, not go to theirs. But if you have it at the same day, you screw both of yourselves. I'm blaming I'm blaming Oz Comic Con because Supernova's had its dates announced for like three years, so. <laughs> Um, not sure if, uh, if too many people know this or not, but uh, Ruby had its season three finale on Sunday. Yeah, I couldn't really get into Ruby. I know Sky loves it, don't you, Sky? Sky's in the chat. It actually got really dark in like the last couple episodes. Yeah. Yep, Sky confirms that he loves it. <laughs> did Sky have a heart attack while watching it? Out of ten, <laughs> Sky, what did you give the finale? Because Sky is our. Ruby person. Hey, we waiting, waiting, waiting. Chat's got a bit of a delay, so yeah. There's a heartbreaker of quality. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, I I just couldn't get into the Ruby animation style. That's just me being a. It has an improved a, a lot. Yeah. The problem is I'd have to suffer through the the, the original stuff, and I just the first I can't, season, I can't yeah. do it. I can't. I tried. I really have. So, so uh, this is annoying news to me. Yeah. The Powerpuff Girls reboot is happening. Can't they leave them dead? Nope. Cartoon Network's doing. It. Cartoon Network are doing it. They. I'll admit, they they look very similar to to the original style and. It's different voice actresses, but they sound very similar. I will nice. give them that. Okay. Uh, Sky says 10 out of 10 for quality, heartbreak, and yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, Stuart, last piece of news. You've got 20 seconds. Go. Iron Boy. Iron Boy. We save so, him for the end. Yep. I'm. So this is an awesome story. Uh, uh, thanks to the Make-A-Wish Foundation and... Uh, uh, New South Wales Police, a young uh, child who had uh, leukemia, got to spend the day with the uh, New South Wales Police Forces Iron Boy. And fighting Ultron. Eventually they had a bit of a showdown and Ultron was taken into custody. Um, so anyway, sorry I have to cut you off but that's it for the podcast. We've got 20 seconds left so we'll catch Bye you all up. later. Um, See ya. Make sure you check out facebook.com slash save sci-fi facebook.com slash save sci-fi podcast 
And keep an eye on Garrison 7 for some epic news. You know it's coming. I'm not allowed to tell you what. Just trust me. Um, we'll be sharing it on Facebook.com. So as soon as we can. Um, check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, and everyone's podcast lift. Bye. Everyone's podcast lift. Bye. Everyone's podcast lift.